welcome to If Not Now, When, the debrief edition. As always, Sébastien Badeau is with me in studio. Hey, Marjorie. But this time, I actually have questions to you, Sébastien. Happy to answer them. Because actually, over the past six episodes, we've been discussing about the change when it comes to lifestyle, luxury, travel, storytelling, or even fighting for the environment. What would be your takeaways? There are many takeaways. I mean, first of all, I thought uh, all the business leaders and people that came and, and spoke to us were incredibly insightful. Uh, they really told personal stories. And the, and the stories that I heard were stories of like agility, um, new way of finding creativity. I think like, that required a lot of resilience to go through uh, all of this. And at the end of the day, really just finding ways, finding new ways to create a new way to do business mm -hmm. in a new environment. So that's kind of like what, what I saw. Does it actually set a trend for 2020? Because believe it or not, 2020 is coming to an end. I think what we saw in 2020 is really is an acceleration. I think a lot of the trends that were already there before just accelerated uh, very fast. We saw it a lot in China. Uh, and also because China is now out of quarantine and, and I've resumed very much of a normal mm -hmm. life, but still like a trend like live stream, which, has, was, which was there prior to COVID, we're seeing now that it's like 35% up year on year. So it's continuing. It's not because COVID is over or quarantine mm -hmm. is over that these trends are not there anymore. They're still there. Obviously the rush towards e-commerce, but also the rush of reinvention of normal commerce, of digital, uh, of non-digital commerce is also there. So we're seeing all of these different trends just accelerated and we're seeing a continuation of that acceleration. It definitely reminds me of one quote of one of our guests, Laurent Milchior mm -hmm. uh, from Etam Group, when it comes to saying that the new norm has to be hybrid and actually hybrid has to be thinking of from scratch from now on. I think so, and, as, uh, and I'll go back also to one of the things that Marie-Laure Sotier Chanon had told us around you know, this concept of making everything around the consumer and really listening mm -hmm. to the consumer needs. I think consumers are driving a lot of the trends, a lot of the changes. We saw it, for example, in, in, in building new platforms such as Luxury Soho, which was really built because the consumers are asking for this. And I think that the idea of making technology available to what the consumer needs are is really what it's all about tomorrow. Of course, now more than ever, we have to navigate uncertainty mm. and be certain that the uncertain and the unknown is the new norm. And 2021 is just around the corner. I want to be super optimistic all the time if possible, especially right now. I think there are a lot of reasons to be optimistic. I think, you know, at the end of the day, we feel that like we're going to get to the end uh, of this crisis. It will happen. One of the things that we've seen also is that, for example, in tourism it has come to a halt, but we're seeing an incredible appetite from the Chinese tourists. We just did a, a live stream with the Louvre and we had over 400,000 people watching live. They show that they want to come, come here. So my first level of optimism is that at one point or another, we're going to reopen our borders. We're going to be able to get tur tourists to come back. Uh, and recreate and re-enchant uh, the relationship and they're there, they're ready for it. Uh, that's one thing. The second part of, of optimism is all this acceleration, which is going to create new companies, new opportunities. And this is definitely something that I see, like this idea that technology can be an enabler for creativity, for business opportunity, for tackling climate change as mm -hmm. well. So I'm seeing optimism there as well. Um, and then the last piece I think is just, you know, believing in humankind and this idea that like we are able to fight uh, mm -hmm. through issues. We've gone through wars, we've gone through a bunch of different things. We're at a war together against the virus. And I think that like we've always come out uh, the other way in a, in a positive manner. And I think that it will come a, a lot from you know, having a common vision, something that we talked about, for example, with Ines not so long ago. Um, this idea of having a common vision of where we want to go as a, uh, as, a, as a species, really. So I'm seeing optimism there as well. I think it's an incredible opportunity for the world. Seeing the glass half full. Now, if I do the math correctly, it's been five years since Alibaba opened the door in France. What would you take away from the past five years? I mean, it's been an incredible journey. And I think my first takeaway is that it's only like the beginning. We're mm -hmm. only, we've only scratched the surface, but we've brought over 300 French brands onto the Chinese market. Some of them are incredibly successful. So LVMH brands, you know, Etam obviously, and Christophe as well. So we're, we're, we're seeing that, we're seeing a lot of growth coming from these brands and this idea of like being an enabler 
uh, to drive new business, to drive, to really be, to facilitate and make it easy to do business anywhere, which is really Alibaba's mission. So I've seen that happening. I, s I think there's still a lot more to mm -hmm. come. What we're seeing also is this idea of taking some of the learnings that we have in China and applying them in France. So for example, the pop-up store that we did with uh -huh. AliExpress, which was using a lot of the technology that we've developed in China and through uh, new ways to enchant the customer journey. And, uh, and, and I think that's super interesting as well. So I think we're uh -huh. really at the beginning but we've already uh, done a lot of amazing things and I'm hoping to do a lot more for the next five years. Now I'm dreaming to ask you something because it's been one of your signature <laughs> questions over this season of, if not now, when. Mm. What are your personal takeaways from Mugdown in 2020? It's, I mean, I think that it's been, to me, really an amazing experience. It's been an amazing experience as a business leader, as a manager. It's been an experience uh, really also as a father uh, and, uh, and as a friend. Uh, I, I think I learned a lot about myself, about mm -hmm. the way that I deal with adversity and deal with complex, uh, complex situations. Uh, and I think what really matters is communication. I think that really is the key to a lot of the things that we do. We have to be able to communicate in a mindful way, really think about what you say, uh, but reach out also to people. I saw a lot of loneliness uh, mm -hmm. during uh, quarantine, and, and I try to reach out to the people that were lonely, mm -hmm. be they in my private or uh, professional life, but also like just being present, being in the moment was very, very important. And I'm trying to continue this uh, post uh, uh, quarantine. What about you, Marjorie? What's your personal takeaway? Wow. At this time? Uh, well, I would say that more than ever, taking our time mm. is meaningful. So taking your time, you have to take it seriously. Make the most of it. Mm. That's it. Absolutely agree with you. Thank you so much, Sebastian. And thank to you for watching. Thank you, Marjorie. It was a pleasure to do this show with you. And thank you guys for watching.